Hello, today is April 2nd, uh, 2022. I haven't made a vlog uh, post for months. <laughs> I can't even forget or remember when. It must have been at least two or three months. Kind of got hit with different health-related things. I'm still standing, uh, but that's kind of what slowed me down a bit. Today I am in a city called Sivogulistan in a region called Sirdaria. And I'll be here just for two weeks, uh, actually not in Tashkent. It's south of Tashkent and I'm gonna be primarily observing teachers. Uh, my first meeting with, there's probably a good 35 teachers in uh, the site where I was, where they're doing these trainings with other Uzbek uh, educators uh, I couldn't get a lot of people to say, hey, come see my class, but I'm going to keep messaging people. So that's been my update on what I've been doing and what I hope to continue doing. In terms of Russian, I can express myself a little bit better. In terms of uh, Uzbek, it froze my Uzbek skills, but that's okay. I can have a basic conversations that would make people think that I know more than I do. So that's good. In terms of music, I have not had the time to study with the person who I did find, who plays an instrument that I want. In terms of plans after maids to participate hopefully in a conference and then uh, see the next step as it arrives. Uh, in terms of poetry and writing, not a lot has happened. There was a moment about a month ago that I was flowing a lot, playing a lot of music and hip hop beats and just rapping or just rapping as I walked around. And uh, it was really nice. So it's the kind of thing that you practice and you get better at. Today I went to a school um, in an area called Sardabad. And uh, I didn't know this, but the region where it was, the city where it was, was just at the site where a dam had broken and uh, caused a lot of damage. So they rebuilt the whole city. They uh, rebuilt a school there. They built a school that kind of made it more modern. Look at these guys on their bikes. I wish I had a bike. Um, and we visited the school. They had a kind of conference for language teachers, specifically English teachers, and they gave them awards, like computers, and uh, they talked about some funding for different schools in the region. And then they had some people talk, and they had a model lesson from a really interesting teacher, and she had really interesting points about language learning that I just loved. Uh, the ones that I remember. Fluency or accuracy? What's more important? Well, in the beginning, fluency. If we're stuck on accuracy the whole time, then we don't get to express ourselves. We're just trying to get everything right. Another thing was about um, every class, every week, I think they have English about three times a week. She uh, teaches her students, I believe it was three phrasal verbs. Maybe it was two uh, new words and uh, be one idiom so then they would kind of be learning those throughout the year and then they'd be quizzed or tested on them and it would just be related to real life situations not just what you find in a book but what you'd actually need to communicate with someone in English uh, or to understand basic things in the news or books or movies or music so that was an interesting strategy what else did she say she just had a really good way of getting us to pay attention one of the strategies she said to keep students paying attention is to continue asking questions um, I am thinking those are the main things that I really appreciated there was other points that she made that are not coming to me now um, this is the most of what I can say for an update what have I been doing with my time Slow down on ping pong, slow down on running, went to a marathon with the team that I run with, but I wasn't able to run it because I had a little bump on the side of my ribs and I had pain. Uh, it was a little accident. And spring is happening. People are really into planting trees. This area, Sirdaria, is... Um, a lot of areas produce cotton, but I'd say this is like the most popular place for cotton, in my view. Um, that's why they have the dam there, to bring more water and irrigate it. Some of the land almost looks like desert. It's not desert, it is earth, but 
it is pretty dry if there wasn't water here. And this setup of this Uzbek city is really similar to some other setups of other Uzbek cities that I've been to. And I haven't been to all of them, obviously, but I'm gonna just show you this area. This is a remembrance of women. Now, specifically mothers. Jigadam uh, is my dear, so why? So a lot of people uh, from Uzbekistan were in World War II, right? Because it was the SSR. And if you come over here, you'll see these are the names. Now, I can't tell you if these are names of just people from this city. I am assuming it is who have passed. If you look at the dates, 1943, 1944, I think these are just individuals from this city or possibly from the region of Sivdaria. Uh, because I've seen one of these in, in Termes, and I'm sure that they have these sort of um, memorials in different cities in the country. And the reason it's for women is that it was thankful for the women. Oh, this person's still alive. Well, they didn't all pass. Some of them are still alive, or at least it hasn't been updated if, it was, if they weren't, but they didn't die in World um, in World War II. So the women were basically the ones keeping the country fed. They were producing cotton. They were producing, yeah, so it's all in Gulistan. They were producing different products. They were taking care of families. They were doing the work that men would often do because a lot of the men, not all obviously, were, um, conscripted to go to World War II. And, you know, some lived and some passed. And this is about that hard time. So it's written here in, in English too, so let's check it out. It says, always in our heart, my dear. Sen doim kalbim is da sen jigadam. You are always in my heart, my dear. So you got this lady here, and that's what happens. Um, <laughs> it's funny, there's like some people seated over there having a good time talking because where can you go when you are in a family like almost 24 7 you can go to a public park and be with your love <laughs> so we got this beautiful Uzbek flag and uh, this setup of the city is kind of similar to other cities that I've seen with these really straight kind of quadrants where the roads are so obviously it's a modern city because of the way it's organized and the buildings often are built in a very similar architectural way so when I go to some cities I say wow I feel like I'm in the same place that I was before and um, what else can I say here are the examples of those roses that they planted I mean I don't believe that these were all here there last year I could be wrong and they, they're just coming up now I was told that when plants are planted, trees, often they're cut. And they're cut because, um, well, when you cut them, bushes and such and trees, they come stronger. And actually all along the areas where they have uh, cotton growing, they often have silk, uh, I guess, mulberry trees. And they bring silkworms there because that's where they make silk. And there's a special kind of association it's possible it's part of the government i'm not sure where they actually uh bring silkworms to farmers uh that have these mulberry trees uh along the sides of their um farms which uh right now there's a lot of wheat bordeaux there's a lot of pachta which is uh, cotton and what i found interesting about the land uh, a lot of the land is actually owned by the government and people kind of, I guess, rent it or lease it for maybe 70 years, 50 years, whatever the time is. But that was interesting because I believe during the times of the USSR, uh, all the land was owned by the state. So that was interesting. And uh, this is what Gulistan looks like. Stan, city, Gul, you know, uh, flower. So Svetok Paruski. This is the land or city of flowers.
I'll show you these hearts over here and uh, these are my updates for you. I was able to talk for 10 minutes straight. I'd love to do these every day, but I don't think I have enough things to say. Uh, today I got to meet an, another guy from New York. Uh, he's worked for over 30 years in different countries and that's really cool. And here are the hearts. So yeah, journeying, talking to different people, being uh, adventurous, it keeps life interesting. And uh, thank you for experiencing my little vlog. Hope you enjoyed it.